Well, howdy folks, welcome back to my channel. And hopefully this is the last video, or at least one of the last videos from the temporary studio. We're getting the house back together. So hopefully I can get all my gear moved back in soon. Today's video, I'm gonna talk about this here, a passive boost pedal. And I would not have believed this is possible. Um, you notice I called it the boost because it's kind of a ghost pedal. More about that later. One of the first things you probably also notice is this kind of burst paint job. I did that. I've painted burst before, but not on a pedal enclosure. Um, but uh, if you've never done that, you just get your three colors and you put down a base coat. In my case, I put down the base coat of red and then you just kind of start creating your burst. And there's it's more of an art than a science, I guess. Sometimes you'd be like, ah, oh, it's too much orange, there's too much yellow, and you just kind of keep going over it until you like it. But I'm really pleased with the way this one came out. I think it looks really great. Let me tell you a real quick history behind this. So I had seen on some guitar forums and stuff this topic that came up, can you build a passive volume pedal? And my immediate response would be, no, you can't, because you need power to create amplification, right? So... um kind of read some of what they were saying. And then I found this video by Waylon McPherson. If you're not familiar with him, I will link his YouTube uh, channel in the description. But I've actually got his website up back here. He does repair and he makes his own effects and pickups and stuff, but he has a lot of really informative stuff out there. And he did some research into this and was like, yes, you absolutely can make a passive volume pedal. Okay, so that's what I did. Now, Waylon did the research. He tells you what components to use. The parts that I used for this two quarter inch mono jacks, a B1M pot, a knob, a three PDT foot switch, and then that transformer, in my case, the uh, TM019. And then you need uh, some wire and um, that's about it. You know, some solder, I guess. And you put it together, very, very simple. Now, I drew up how I was going how I plan to put it together and I'll go ahead and put this on the screen for you very 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 simple circuit uh, again you've just got the two jacks the pot you know and, and a couple other components very very simple to do um, I also made a video while I was putting it together a time lapse video and it's very very simple um, you just mount all the components into the enclosure and um, you know I just literally soldered the the transformer itself between the switch and the pot. Like literally there's no wire in there. It just makes the connection um, because the legs on it were long enough. If you if they were too short, you might have to make a small wire there or something. But that's basically it. And then you just wire up the jacks and then a common ground. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much all it is. Now you notice on the three PDT foot switch, you don't use the middle lugs at all because there's no LED in this. You're not switching power on or off because it is indeed a passive pedal but that's it super simple to build um again i'm very pleased with the aesthetic one other thing i'll point out here you see there's this little line here well if you look closely that's actually a little arrow and then i used a knob with some numbers on it so you can see exactly where you're at on the boost scale so you know if you're like hey i had a sweet spot right around seven you can get back to that really easy now if you know a lot about circuits you might still be thinking to yourself wait how does that work because how is there enough current there to actually make the audio transformer do what it's supposed to do. Well, I said this was a ghost pedal earlier, right? And that's why it's called the boost. That's because it actually uses a buffer from another pedal. So all you have to do is put this pedal behind another pedal that has a buffered output. And that's what actually allows it to work. Now, if you were to plug this in just directly between your guitar and your amp, it's not gonna work. So that's a big discussion in the pedal world, right? People say true bypass versus buffered bypass, which is better, what do I want, blah, blah, blah. Well, any boss pedal like this, um, any any boss pedal, distortion, compression, it doesn't matter, it's gonna have a buffered output. Also, most of the DOD and Digitech pedals that have the similar aesthetic, the Behringer pedals, et cetera, et cetera, and the effect doesn't need to be on, it just needs to be in front of the boost because it's the output that actually makes the boost work. Now, instead of me keep talking about it, Let's actually demonstrate that. Okay, folks, let's excuse the uh, kind of unorthodox camera angle here, but I've got my Duo Sonic, I've got my little Vox amp, and I've got the boost pedal here, and um, I'm dealing with limited space, so I don't have access to all my gear. Most of the studio is in boxes, but just plugging in this little combination, here's our clean tone. <laughs> so, you know, sounds pretty clean. Now, remember, this is hooked direct and this shouldn't work. So if I kick 
the boost pedal in. We hear just a little bit of sound, but not much. So back to bypass. So again, it shouldn't work in this particular configuration. Let's go ahead and add a pedal in front. Okay, so now I've added my Boss RV6 reverb in front of the boost pedal, and the reverb is not on. As you can hear if I kick it on. So no doubt, <laughs> it's definitely off. And uh, now the boost pedal should do what it's supposed to do. So here is our um, bypass tone. Let's kick it in. So we definitely hear that volume boost and it's just kind of starting to get that breakup that we don't get in the bypass. So that is exactly what we want a boost pedal to do. Okay, so now I've plugged in my Behringer CS400 compression sustainer pedal. Now this is a normal thing that you would put in front of a boost pedal. It's, it's very common to see a compressor in front of a boost pedal. Um, now I could turn it on. It actually sounds really great for the price, but um, I'm gonna keep it disengaged because remember it doesn't need to be on, it just needs to be there. And now let me uh, play something in the bypass here. Let's go ahead and engage the boost. That actually might be a little too much. Let's dial it back a little bit, maybe like this. So there you go. It's definitely doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so let's see how it sounds with some chords. Big difference. Okay, let's dial in just a little bit hotter tone on the amp. We'll go to the neck pickup and see what that sounds like. And with the boost. Oh, I love that. Okay, so there you have it, folks. That is how you make a passive boost pedal and what it sounds like. Hopefully you can hear those clips pretty good. I just did ambient audio due to the limited space, but uh, let me know if you wanna hear some direct clips or if you have any questions about it, please post them below in the comments. If you like what I do on this video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button for me. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys soon.